Hi guys, so it is Monday, May 16th, and the photo you're seeing is of my friend Chris. Um, yeah, he's just going to be there. Um, this is Bible in a Year catch-up, the last catch-up day, and then tomorrow it'll be, hopefully, it'll go until... We won't have any mess ups. So, so I'm reading the Daily Word, and today's their Bible in a year is Second Kings 24 and 25, and John 5 1 through 24. It says, "Is he good?" I don't think God is good, my friend told me. She had been praying for years about some difficult issues, but nothing had improved. Her anger and bitterness over God's silence grew. Knowing her well, I sensed that deep down she believed God is good. But the continual pain in her heart and God's seeming lack of interest caused her to doubt. It was easier for her to get angry than to bear the sadness. Doubting God... Doubting God's goodness is as old as Adam and Eve. The serpent put that thought into Eve's mind when he suggested that God was withholding the fruit from her because God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. In pride, Adam and Eve thought they, rather than God, should determine what was good for them. Years after losing a daughter in death, James Bryan Smith found he was able to affirm God's goodness. In his book, The Good and the Beautiful God, Smith wrote, God's goodness is not something I get to decide upon. I am a human being with limited understanding. Smith's amazing comment isn't naive. It arises out of the years of processing his grief and seeking God's heart. In times of discouragement let's listen well to each other and help each other to see the truth that god is good and that was by ann setas and the prayer is lord we will praise you in our difficult times like the psalmist did you know us and we turn to you because we know you are good And then the little blurb, it's, The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. Psalm 145.9 So, let's see. It's Genesis 35 through 37. 34 through 37. Okay. Now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she had born to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, took her, and lay with her, and violated her. His soul was strongly attracted to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the young woman and spoke kindly to the young woman. So Shem broke, spoke to his father, saying, Get me this young woman as a wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. Now his sons were with his livestock in the field, so Jacob held his peace until they came. Then Hamer, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to speak with him. And the sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard it. And the men were grieved and very angry, because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, a thing which ought not to be done. But... Armor spoke with them, saying, The soul of my son, son Shechem, longs for your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife, and make marriages with us. 
give your daughters to us and take our daughters to yourselves. So you shall dwell with us and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade in it and acquire possessions for yourselves in it. Then Shechem said to her father and her brothers, Let me find favor in your Let me find favor in your eyes, and whatever you say to me I will give. Ask me ever so much dowry and gift, and I will give according to what you say to me. But give me the young woman as a wife. But the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Harmer his father, and spoke deceitfully, deceitfully, because he had defiled Dinah their sister. And they said to them, We cannot do this thing, to give our sister to one who is uncircumcised, for that would be a reapproach to us. But on this condition we will consent to you. If you will become as we are, if every male of you is circumcised, then we will give our daughters to you. And we will take your daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. But if you do not heed us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and be gone. And their words pleased Armor and Skim, Armor's son. So the young man did not delay to do the thing, because he delighted in Jacob's daughter. He was more honorable than all the household of his father. And Armor and Shechem, his son, came to the gate of their city and spoke with the men of their city, saying, These men are at peace with us. Therefore, let them dwell in the land and trade in for it. For indeed, this land is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters to us as wives, and let us give them our daughters. Only on this condition will the man consent to dwell with us, to be the one people. If every male among us is circumcised, as they are circumcised, will not, will not their livestock, their property, and every animal of theirs be ours? Only let city heed Harmer and Shechem, his son. Every male... was circumcised, and all who went out of the gate of his city. Now it came to pass on the third day, when they were in pain, the two sons of Jacob, Simon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, each took his sword and came boldly upon the city. And killed all the males. And they killed armor and scam his son, with the edge of the sword, and took Dinah from Shechem's house and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and plundered the city because their sister has been defied, defiled. They took their sheep, their oxen, and their donkeys, what was in the city and what was in the field, and all their wealth, and all their little ones and their wives they took captive, and they plundered even all that was in the houses. Then Jacob said to Simon and Levi, You have troubled me by making me obnoxious among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And since I am few in number, they will gather themselves together against me and kill me. I shall be destroyed, my household and I. But they said, Should he treat our sister like a harlot? Then God said, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there and make an altar there to God. Who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother? And Jacob said to his household, and to who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you, and purify yourselves, and change your garments. Then let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and has been with me in the way which I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods, gods which were in their hands and the earrings which were in their ears and Jacob hid them under the ter- terebinth tree which was by Shechem. Shechem and they journeyed and the terror of God was upon the cities that were all around them and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob so Jacob came to Luz 
that is Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him, and he built an altar there and called the place El Bethel, because there God appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother. Now Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died and was buried below Bethel under the terebinth tree, so the name of it was called Alan Bahuth. Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob anymore, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. Also God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you. And kings shall come from your body. The land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, I give to you. And to your descendants, after I give, after you, I give this land. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. So Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, and a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering on it. He poured oil on it, and Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke with him, Bethel. Then they journeyed from Bethel, and when they when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath, Rachel labored in childbirth, and she had a hard labor. Now it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, the midwife said to her, Do not fear, you will have this son also. And so it was, as her soul was departing, for she had died, that she called the name ben Ani, but his father called him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried, buried under, on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. And Jacob set a pillar on her grave, which is a pillar of Rachel's grave to this day. Then Israel journeyed and pitched his tent beyond the tower of Eder, Eder. and it happened when Israel dwelt in the land that Reuben went and lay with Belial's father in concubine, and Israel heard about it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. The sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Simon, Levi, Judea, Isaacchar, and Zebulun. The sons of Rachel were Joseph, Benjamin. The sons of Belial. Rachel's maidservant were Dan and Naphtali. The sons of Ziphlah, Leah's maidservant, were Gad and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Padanaram. Then Jacob came to his father Isaac at Mamir, Mamre, or Kirjath Arba, that is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had dwelt. Now the days of Isaac for 180 years. So Isaac breath, breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people, being old and full of days. And his sons he saw and Jacob buried him. Now this is the genealogy of Esau, who is Edom. Esau took his wives from the daughters of Canaan, Adah, the daughter of Elian, the Hittite, Ah, uh, holy Bama, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zebulun the Hivite, and Basemeth, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nebajoth. Now, Adah bore Eliphaz to Esau, and Basemeth to bore Reuel, and Aholabab, uh, Aholabama bore Jesus, Jalam, and Korah. These were the sons of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Then Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the persons of his household, his castle, and all his animals, and all his goods which he had gained in the land of Canaan. And went to a country away from the presence of his brother Jacob, for their possessions were too great for them to dwell together, and the land 
where they were strangers could not support them because of their livestock. So Esau dwelt in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. This is the genealogy of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. These were the names of Esau's sons. Eliphaz, the son of Adah, the wife of Esau. Raul, the son of Basemath, the wife of Esau. And the sons of Eliphaz were Timon, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, and Kenaz. Now, Timnah was the concubine of Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bore Amalek to Eliphaz. These were the sons of Adah, Esau's wife. These were the sons of Reu, Nahath, Zerah, Shema, and Mizah. These were the sons of Basemath, Esau's wife. These were the sons of Aholibama, Esau's wife, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zebion, and she bore to Esau, Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. Oh my goodness. These were the chiefs of the sons of Esau, the son of Eliphaz, the firstborn son of Esau, the chief Timan, chief Omar, chief Zophar, chief Kenaz, chief Korah, chief Gatam, and chief Amalek. These were the chiefs of Eliphaz and the land of Edom. They were the sons of Adah. These were the sons of Reuel, Esau's son, chief Nahath, chief Zerah, chief Sema, Samha, and Chief Mazah. They were the chiefs of Raul in the land of Edom. These were the sons of Basemath, Edom's wife. And these were the sons of Aholibama, Esau's wife, Chief Jeus, Chief Jalam, and Chief Korah. These were the chiefs who had descended from Aholibama, Esau's wife, the daughter of Anna, and uh, these were the sons of Esau, who was Edom. These were their chiefs. Quick. Okay. There were sons of Seir, the Horite, who inhibited the land. Lotan, Shabal, Zibion, Anna, Dishon, Ezer, and Dishan. These were the chiefs of the Horites, the sons of Seir in the land of Edom. The sons of Lotan were Hori and Hamam. Lotan's sister was Timna. These were the sons of Shabal, Alvin, Manahath, Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. These were the sons of Zipion, both Ajah and Anna. This was the Anna who found the children of you know, who the water in the wilderness as he pastured the donkeys of his father Zibion. These were the children of Anna, Dishon, and Aholabama. The daughter of Anna. These were the sons of Dishon. Hemdan, Ishban, Ithran, Sharan. These were the sons of Azir. Bilhan, Zaban, and Achan. These were the sons of Dishan. Who's in Iran? These were the chiefs of the Horites. Chief Lotan, Chief Shabal, Chief Zibion, Chief Anna, Chief Dishan, Chief Ezer, Chief Dishan. These were the chiefs of the Herites, Horites, according to their chiefs in the land of Seir. Now these were the kings who reigned the land of Edom before any king reigned over the children of Israel. Bela the son of Behor reigned in Edom. The name of the city was Dinaba. And when Bela died, Jobab the son of Zerah and of Basra reigned in his place. When Joah died, Hashem 
of the land, and the Tamanites reigned in his place. And when Hashem died, Hadad, the son of Bedad, who attacked Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in his place. And the name of his city was Avith. When Hadad died, Samla of Maskara reigned in his place. And when Samla died, Saul of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his place. When Sahu died, Baal Hanan, the son of Akbor, reigned in his place. And when Baal Hanan, the son of Akbor, died, Hadar reigned in his place. The name of his city was Po. His, wife, his wife's name was Methabal, and the, the daughter of Metrid, the daughter of Mizhab. These were the names of the chiefs of Esau, according to their families and their places by their names. Chief Timonah, Chief Abla, Chief Jetheth, Chief Elibama, Chief Elah, Chief Pinan, Chief Kendaz, Chief Temen, Chief Mizba, Mibzar, Chief Magdal, and Chief Aram. These were the chiefs of Edom, according to their dwelling places in the land of their possession. Esau was the father of the Edomites. Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the lad was the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Ziphlah, his, wife, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report to him as his father, to them as his father, to, reported them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that her, that their father loved him more than all of his brothers. They hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and also stood upright, and indeed your sheaf stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us, or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and his words. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream, and this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I have, and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he said to him, Here I am. Then he said to him, Please go and see if it is well with your brothers, and well with the flocks, and bring back word to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron, and he went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him. There he was, wandering in the field. And the man asked him, What are you seeking? He said, I am seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are feeding their flocks. And the man said, They have departed from here, for I heard them say, Let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. Now when he saw him afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired against him to kill him. Then they said to one another, Look, this dreamer is coming. Come, therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit. And we shall say, some wild beast has devoured him. We shall see what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, 
but cast him into this pit which is in the this in the wilderness and do not lay a hand on him that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father so it came to pass when joseph had come to his brothers and they stripped joseph of his tunic the tunic of many colors that was on him then he they took him and cast him into a pit and the pit was empty there was no water in it then they sat down and ate a meal then they lifted their eyes and looked and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels bearing spices, balm and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judea, Judah Judea said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us seal, sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand upon be upon him. For he is our brother in our flesh. And his brothers listened. Then midnight traders passed by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Then Reuben returned to the pit, and indeed Joseph was not in the pit. And he tore his clothes. And he returned to his brothers and said, The lad is no more. And I, where shall I go? So they took Joseph's tunic and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the tunic in blood. And they sent the tunic of many colors. And they brought it to their father and said, We have found this. Do you know whether it is your son's tunic or not? And he recognized it and said, It is my son's tunic. A wild beast had devoured him. Without doubt, Joseph was torn to pieces. And Jacob tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his waist and mourned his son for many days. And all his sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I shall go into the grave to my son in mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Now the Mennonites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. Okay, and then it's Matthew. While he was still talking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and brothers stood outside seeking to speak with him. Then one said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak with you. But he answered and said to the one who told him, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Then it's 13. 1 through 35. Okay. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. A great multitudes were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, sour went out to sow, sow, sow. And he had sowed some seed and fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell in, on stony places where they did not have much earth, and immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Some fell among thorns, and some of the thorns sprang up and choked them. But the others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? 
He answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has to him, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you will see, and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, their eyes have, they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For assuredly, I say to you, that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked ones come and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside, but he who received the seed on the stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, and he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word. And the cares of this word, world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the world, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and then in time of harvest I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares, and bind them into bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like mustard seed, which a man took and sowed, in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Another parable he spoke to them, The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid the tree measures of meal till it was all leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the multitude in parables. Without a parable, he did not speak to them, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things kept secret from the foundation of the world. And then it's Psalms. Psalms 10, 1 through 18.
Okay. Psalms 10. Why do you stand afar off, O Lord? Why do you hide in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride persecutes the poor. Let them be caught in plots which they have devised. For the wicked boasts of his heart desire. He blesses the greedy and renounces the Lord. The wicked is the wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. He's, his ways are always prospering, for your judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he sneers at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue is trouble and iniquity. He sits in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places, he murders the innocent. His eyes are secretly fixed on the helpless. He lies in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lies in wait to catch the poor. He catches the poor when he draws him into his net. So he crouches, he lies low, that the helpless may fall by his strength. He has said in his heart, God has forgotten. He, has, he hides his face, he will never see. Arise, O Lord. O oh God, lift up your hand. Do not forget the humble. Why do the wicked renounce God? He has said in his heart, you will not require an account. But you have seen, for you observed trouble and grief. To repay it by your hand, the helpless commits himself to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness until you find none. The Lord is king forever, and the nations have perished out of his land. Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. You will prepare their heart. You will cause your ear to hear, to do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may oppress no more. And that is the end of today's reading. And that was two days worth after today it'll only be one day and one day and one day so it won't be as long as it has been so i will see you tomorrow bye